Hi, my name's Adam Spires and I'd like to show you a quick demo of a tool I've built for detecting and visualizing dependencies between commits in a Git repository. The tool's called Git Depths and you can look at the project here on GitHub. So what do I mean by dependencies between commits and why would anybody care about them? Well, you can read the background theory and the motivation here in the readme and also a story about how I got the idea to write the tool in the first place but rather than talk at length about these things it's probably easier to explain by giving you a quick demo of the tool itself so let's start with a fresh, a fresh git repository it's got one file in and that file comes from a single commit and the uh, file has ten numbered lines in it and I'm going to make things slightly more interesting by copying file A to file B and then adding that and committing it to the repository and I will now edit file A and make a change so we've got a commit changing file A so I'll give it a commit message uh, file A 3A Okay, so now we have three commits in our repository, uh, two creating files and one changing the file, the, uh, file A. So we're ready to try out uh, the git depths command now. Uh, you can just run it from the command line. Uh, as normal with minus H will give you help. And if we just run it uh, with the current master branch as the parameter or head uh, is the same thing actually um, then what it will do is analyze uh, dependencies of that commit the, the one at the top of the master branch and output any dependencies to standard out so you can see it's shown us that there's one dependency and if we do our git log again then we can see that that corresponds to uh, this commit here which is the one creating file A so that's saying that effectively if we want to be able to change the third line of file A we need file A to be there in the first place so that's nothing too earth shattering so far um, it starts to give you an idea about the concept of dependencies between commits uh, you've probably already noticed that it's a bit annoying having to match up long hexadecimal hash numbers um, in the output of the command with um, outputs from git log. And that's where the uh, visualization part of the tool starts to come in handy. So let's fire that up now. So it's very easy to do once you have the dependencies installed. You simply um, do git depths minus s or minus minus serve and that fires up a lightweight web server on port 5000 of localhost and we can go and visit that now and it gives us this web page and we can start detecting dependencies and visualizing them right away so it defaults to master so we just click submit and it shows us the dependency that uh, we were just told about on the command line and you can hover over um, the nodes in the graph and it will e each node in the graph corresponds to a commit and you can see from the tooltip which uh, commit it corresponds to so this is clearly showing us the dependency that we found out before uh, which is that changing uh, the third line of file A depends on the file being there in the first place so what happens if we change file B? So I'll open that up in the editor and change 5 to 5A and commit that. So file B, uh, 5A. All right, that's committed. Now this uh, web interface updates dynamically. So we've just moved master to point at the new commit. So I can just hit submit again and it will add the new master to the uh, graph. So here we go, we've got the original dependency on the left and here's the new one on the right. And we can see that the 
two most recent commits we made are independent of each other because they're um, affecting different files. One is effect, uh, affecting file A and the other file B. So th that's not uh, too surprising either. Uh, but what happens if we make another change to file A? So I'll go back to file A in my editor and let's say we change line 8. So I commit that file A goes to 8A and I hit submit again. Now things are looking a bit more interesting. So we have uh, the commit which changed line 3 here and the new one we just made which change is line 8 and they both depend on the existence of file A um, but they are independent of each other because they're changing different parts of the same file and obviously the, the change to file um, B is, is independent of both of those commits. Um, by the way you can uh, specify in this box here any uh, standard uh, format for for git commits or references so things like this will work um, of course the the parent of the current master is the one that we previously analyzed so that's already on the graph and so on um, any of these usual formats will work but if we do um, if we specify a commit that doesn't make sense then we'll get a warning and similarly if it's complete nonsense um, another useful thing to know is that we can double click on commits and it will uh, it, I, I have it set up to through a custom uh, URL protocol uh, and, and a corresponding handler it will automatically launch the gitk tool so um, what it does is it fires up gitk and then it jumps to the commit that you uh, double clicked on so that's useful for exploring uh, the history in different ways. So we've done independent uh, changes to files so far. What if we now change the line that we changed before? So let's change 3a to 3b and I'll commit that. So file a goes to 3b and hit submit again. Whoops to have master here of course. Now this is pretty interesting. Um, so we have the 3A change as before and the 8A and here's our new 3B change and we can see that depends on 3A so in order to be able to change the line uh, a line 3A to 3B we need the commit which provides that line in the first place and that in turn depends on the creation of the file. Um, this dependency here is maybe a, a bit more surprising. Uh, the reason for that is that the uh, dependency inference is by default taking uh, context lines uh, of the diff into account as well and that's something you can actually tune uh, as a parameter. So this all looks quite nice uh, but why is it actually useful? Well so far we've been looking at the master branch but imagine we also had um, a stable release branch for example which didn't have any of these commits in it well if we wanted to backport any of these commits to that stable branch this dependency graph immediately gives us a good idea of how much work would be involved so for example if we wanted to backport uh, this commit then we know we would know from the graph that we would also we would have to cherry pick this one before we could cherry pick that one and similarly if we uh, wanted to backport this commit we would have to cherry pick this one first but we wouldn't have to cherry pick any of the others and if we wanted to backport this commit then we would need these two as well but none of the others so uh, that lets us plan ahead if we're going to engage on some kind of backporting project um, you know maybe it's a bug fix or a feature um, that a customer has requested to be ported to a stable release then um, this will give us a, a strong idea of, of how complex that task 
is likely to be. So uh, let's try running the tool on a slightly more complex repository. Uh, well, actually quite a lot more complex. I'm going to run it on the uh, the git depths repository itself that contains the source code for the the tool and we'll get uh, ah of course I have to um, start up the web server for that first so let's do that so I'm going to switch to um, that repository and run it um, Let's run it on port 5001 just to show that that's possible. So here we go. Um, let's look at master. And um, actually, no. I'm going to, I've got a, a demo tag set up here. Um, so let's look at that tag instead. Uh, by the way, uh, tags uh, appear in the tooltip as you can see here. It says demo. And when we hover over a commit that doesn't have the dependencies of that commit analyzed yet, then you get this plus icon, which you can click on, and that will expand. Um, so it's equivalent to typing the hash of that commit in here or some reference to it, but it's just a bit more user-friendly. And um, we get told that we've found 30 new dependencies here. And we can carry on. Um, and keep adding dependencies and you can see it can get pretty complex sometimes the layout um, can get a bit confused um, it is possible to to move things around to some extent um, it's uh, the, the layout is not perfect yet there are still a few improvements that are mentioned in the issue tracker that I'm working on and I would welcome help with uh, with, with any of those, but it, it's generally good enough um, for for most things right now. You can pan around as you can see and you can zoom in and out with the mouse wheel um, and you can double click on the background and it will zoom to fit and there's a full screen button here as well. Um, so that's a brief look at the tool. I hope it makes sense. I'd love to hear your feedback uh, on what you think. Uh, if you want, you can reply to this mail thread that I started on the Git mailing list, uh, or you can also get in touch via the uh, GitHub repository, of course. There's an issue tracker here, which already has quite a lot of um, enhancement ideas and a few bugs in there. Um, I'm particularly interested to hear from developers of web frontends for Git because I think the tool could be made a lot more useful when, if it was integrated with other web frontends. Uh, so if you if you are one of those developers or maintainers, then feel free to get in touch. Uh, I'd like to thank my employer Sousa for effectively sponsoring the. Uh, visualization part of this project through our most recent Hack Week. Uh, in case you don't work for SUSE and you're wondering what a Hack Week is, it's a week-long event where all the developers get to work on whatever we want as uh, long as it's related to free software in some way. So that's quite a lot of fun, as they say in the SUSE world. Um, if you're actually interested in getting paid to develop free and open source software, we're hiring at the moment, so feel free to visit our careers page and have a look at the jobs currently available. Thanks for watching.